The interwar period saw a number of naval treaties that limited the overall tonnage of naval ships and fleets. With these restrictions, many of the world's navies sought to build small, fast ships that adhered to the treaties while still offering significant fighting power. Because of this, many World War II ships, especially early in the war, ended up with fatal design flaws such as weak armor and haphazard designs. In this video, we're going to look at some of the worst fighting ships of World War II. This video is sponsored by Surfshark. In 1922, the US, the UK, Japan, Italy and France enacted the Washington Naval Treaty which limited the overall tonnage of the signatory navies. After building USS Yorktown and Enterprise, the US still had 14,700 metric tons available and decided to build a small aircraft carrier, USS Wasp. First laid down in 1936 and commissioned in 1940, USS Wasp was doomed from the start. With 43% or almost 10,000 tons less displacement than her Yorktown cousin, Wasp had no torpedo protection and cruised at a modest speed of 29.5 knots. Additionally, neither her boilers or internal aviation fuel stores were protected, putting her at a higher risk for fire and explosions. The builders recognized these problems early on, but due to the size limitations, they were unable to rectify them. Despite this, WASP was involved in a number of successful operations in the Mediterranean. These included Operation Calendar and Operation Bowery, where WASP successfully launched Spitfire and Wildcat aircraft over Malta for additional air support. Then, in 1942, she was transferred to the Pacific Fleet, where her luck ran out. In September, while escorting marine transports, the Japanese submarine I-19 struck her with three torpedoes. The torpedoes hit the gasoline tanks and fires quickly spread across the ship, causing ammunition stores to explode. Within five hours, the crew abandoned her. This was the doom the builders had foretold. Funnily enough, the Navy later concluded that with heavier armor, the ship would likely have survived the torpedo attacks. The Giussano subclass of the Condottieri cruisers consisted of four light cruisers, all laid down in 1928 by the Regia Marina. The vessels were built to catch and sink French Fantas class large destroyers. As such, speed was their highest priority. The Giussano class cruiser was designed to reach speeds of 30 knots, but the government incentivized builders to increase this by offering them bonuses for every knots above 30. They reached 42 knots during trials, but this proved unreplicable in the sea. The final top speed the Giussano class cruiser achieved was 37 knots. To do this, the cruisers had to be light. With the displacement of just 6,842 tons fully loaded, these ships had virtually no armor. Instead, the Italians relied on firepower and speed to outrun torpedoes. They equipped the Giussano with 8 152mm guns, 6 100mm guns, 8 37mm, 54 caliber guns, and 8 machine guns. Four Giussano class cruisers were launched between January 1931 and February 1932. They saw limited combat in the 1936 Abyssinian Crisis and the Spanish Civil War. When World War II broke out, the British fleet went on the offensive in the Mediterranean. In July 1940, a British reconnaissance plane spotted two of the Giussano ships, Bartolomeo Celloni and Giovanni della Banda Nero, heading toward Leros in the Aegean Sea. The HMAS Sydney appeared, quickly sinking Bartolomeo Celloni. In December 1941, four British and Dutch destroyers blew up two more of Giussano cruisers near Cape Bon, off the coast of Tunisia. The final cruiser, Giovanni della Bandanere, saw minor success in the war, but she too succumbed to torpedoes on the 1st of April 1942. After the Giosano's disastrous run, Condottieri subclasses slowly improved, especially with respect to defense and armor. As governments remove restrictions and people start traveling again, 
The importance of having a top tier VPN service, namely Surfshark, cannot be overstated. As someone who travels quite often, I constantly see the recurring benefits of Surfshark. For example, when I'm in an airport cafe connected to the public Wi-Fi, I know my data and information is unsafe unless I turn my VPN on. Additionally, when I get to a new country, the regional restrictions on what content you can view can be super annoying. With Surfshark, you can beat these restrictions with the click of a button and connect to 100 plus countries and 3,200 different servers. It's not only useful traveling though. Don't forget Surfshark's clean web feature, which also allows you to surf the web safely by blocking trackers, malware, and phishing attempts. To get three months free and 83% off for a quality VPN that doesn't monitor, track, or store anything you do and enhances your online experience in every way, click the link in the description below and use the code FRONT. Surfshark's so confident you will love their service that they offer a 30-day money-back guarantee. The HMS Courageous was the lead ship of the Royal Navy's Courageous class battle cruisers. First laid down in 1915, she was 234 meters long and she displaced 22,922 metric tons at full load. During trials, she proved to be structurally weak, buckling under harsh weather and suffering fuel tank leaks. She still served in the First World War, mainly patrolling the North Seas, albeit with little impact. After signing the Washington Naval Treaty, the Royal Navy had to scrap or convert many of their older battleships and battle cruisers. HMS Courageous would be converted into an aircraft carrier due to her large hull and high top speed. Once converted, she could carry up to 48 aircraft at once. Unfortunately, the conversion was less than ideal. As a battle cruiser, she had light armor and, during the conversion, little protection was added. Additionally, with nearly 5,000 tons of added displacement, she was less stable than most purpose-built carriers. When World War II began, Courageous was assigned to a hunter-killer group tasked with destroying U-boats off Ireland's Atlantic coast. On 17 September 1939, a pair of U-29 torpedoes slammed into her port side. The torpedoes knocked out the carrier's power and her compartments quickly filled with water. She capsized and sank within 15 minutes. Because many World War I era ships lacked effective torpedo protection and the Royal Navy never rectified that, Courageous was the first Allied ship the Germans sunk during the war. Later aircraft carriers improved upon Courageous's design, including stronger armor and improving stability. The Königsberg class or K class was a type of German light cruiser built between 1926 and 1930. On paper, these three ships had the perfect balance of weight, speed, and firepower. But due to tonnage limitations imposed by the Treaty of Versailles and the Washington Naval Treaty, they were designed with lighter metals. Additionally, nearly 100% of the hull was welded, as opposed to riveted or bolted, which meant that the hull was weak and unstable. During the 1930s, before the war began, K-class cruisers took part in non-intervention patrols in the Spanish Civil War. Throughout that decade, the cruisers suffered due to their light hulls. Fractures and tears along it were common in harsh weather or when the ship's guns were fired. In 1939, after the outbreak of World War II, these cruisers were sent to lay mines in the North Sea. In April 1940, all three ships participated in Operation Weser Übung, Germany's invasion of Norway. On the 9th of April, the first K-class cruiser, Karlsruhe, sunk after being struck by a pair of torpedoes. The ship lost power and the crew scuttled and abandoned her. A day later, a second K-class cruiser, Königsberg, was damaged by shore batteries, then went down after the Royal Air Force bombed her to hell while at anchor. The last K-class cruiser, Köln, fared much better, surviving until March 1945 when she finally succumbed to American bombs. Ultimately, major design flaws made these ships incredibly vulnerable to torpedoes and airstrikes. Designed to be the third battleship in the Yamato class, the Shinano was first laid down in 1940. However, during the first years of the war, most navies realized that battleships were no longer as practical as aircraft carriers. In 1942, after the US destroyed four Japanese fleet carriers in the Battle of Midway, the Japanese Navy converted the Shinano into a carrier support ship. Shinano was designed to support other aircraft and act as a refueling station for planes during battle. It was 266 meters in length and had a displacement of 73,000 metric tons at full load. While she was built with plenty of anti-aircraft and surface protection, 
Shinano lacked dedicated anti-submarine protection, which would ultimately lead to her demise. She was supposed to launch in 1945, but this was expedited after Japan's defeat at the Battle of the Philippine Sea in June 1944. Instead, she was launched on the 8th of October, but before making it out of the harbour, she encountered issues. A problem with the Kazan that held the water back in the port damaged the bow structure and required repairs. They tried again in November 1944, despite Shinanao being incomplete. Her watertight doors had not been installed, many cable holes remained unsealed, and the fire mains and bailing system were inoperable. She was also missing boilers, which limited her speed to 25 knots. On 29 November 1944, USS Archerfish, a submarine, approached Shinana. Zigzagging and constantly moving two knots faster than the submarine, Shinana maintained a safe distance. That was until a bearing overheated. This forced Shinana to slow down, making her an easy target for the enemy submarine, which fired four torpedoes. The ship's inferior anti-submarine armor, combined with her crew's failure to mitigate the damage caused by the torpedoes, led to the Shinanao sinking seven hours later. Many of these ships were terrible because of limitations imposed by the interwar treaties. Others, while looking good on paper, simply didn't fare as well in practice. None of the ships we cover today survived the war. They were far from the only poorly designed ships of the war, but they were certainly among the very worst. But what do you think? Did we present a fair assessment of the ships? Did we miss any especially horrible vessels? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope you learned something new.